After learning to catch whitewater waves by himself and popping up consistently, a beginner surfer is usually going to be looking at understanding how to pass the break and consistently catching and surfing unbroken waves to the beach, front side and backside. To help you achieve this faster, we have broken down some of our best tips on transitioning from a beginner to intermediate surfer. When learning to surf, it is crucial not to make the mistake of going for a board that is too small for you. For your first few sessions, you will usually be on a foam board, which is the easiest and safest way to learn. After that, we recommend buying or renting a longboard that's made out of fiberglass epoxy or plastic. Buoyancy is the most important factor. At this level, you should ride a surfboard that has more volume for the following reasons. You need to be able to catch as many waves as possible. A big board will help you catch waves with less effort. This will allow you to have the most opportunities to repeat those takeoffs you need to practice. Once standing, bigger surfboards will give you stability, allowing you to focus on your stance, body position and be aware of your surroundings. You will usually be learning in weak waves. When the waves are weak, you will need a bigger board to float and glide you on the surface of the water. Surfing a smaller board in weak waves is much harder. Even advanced surfers often ride bigger boards in smaller conditions. Once standing, you want to accumulate surfing time. A bigger board will give you more margin of error, helping you to surf waves for longer. Learning to catch unbroken waves takes a lot of trial and error. A bigger board will make this process much easier. Only when you're consistently catching decent sized and broken waves should you start thinking about going for something smaller. If you move to a smaller board, this should be gradual and should not strongly impact your capacity to catch unbroken waves. If it does, this means you're only hurting your progression potential by limiting the number of waves you end up surfing. When learning to surf, most surfers will unconsciously develop small bad habits in how they take off on the board. The most popular mistakes surfers make when learning to take off are using the knees, looking down, not creating enough space under their body and using their hands incorrectly. If you think you may need help on fixing your takeoff, you might want to check out the Takeoff Techniques complete online course available for free on our online coaching platform. On top of breaking down each of the four most popular takeoff techniques, we go over each of the most common mistakes and guide you through fixing them. The earlier you can get yourself filmed, the better. The first way to fix something on your technique is to discover it in the first place. You have to be conscious of what you're doing wrong to start the process of fixing it. When watching your surf footage in slow motion, pay close attention to every moment and try to isolate patterns that put you off balance or make you take longer to stand up. Compare your videos to tutorials or footage from advanced surfers to understand how to approach fixing your mistakes. Once you have a clearer idea of what you need to change, try to remember and focus on fixing it during your next surf session. Fixing your takeoff mistakes is essential. Intermediates suffering from unfixed takeoff bad habits are very common. Taking off quickly and efficiently is the starting point of your ride. Not being able to take off optimally is the most common reason for surfers failing to follow the wave successfully. Beginner and low intermediate surfers have the reflex of staying too tall on their surfboard. This puts them off balance and it makes it harder to control the water flow under the board. Advanced surfers keep a low center of gravity and properly distribute their weight over their board, providing extra stability. They are ready to extend and compress to generate speed or power through turns in this position. As a beginner or low intermediate, Developing the habit of surfing in a compressed position is how you'll build your foundation for an optimal stance. Again, get some footage of your surfing and see if you're compressing your lower body enough. Angling the takeoff provides considerable benefits that are crucial for beginners and intermediates. Learning to angle the takeoff is like having a little boost every time you want to get into a wave. Here are a few reasons why a surfer would want to angle the takeoff. It's easier to draw your line on the shoulder. When surfers angle their takeoff, they actually ride the wave on their chest towards the right or to the left for a short time. 
This allows them to build momentum towards the right or to the left. Also, it puts them in the right line right from the start to follow the wave. It helps to surf fast peeling waves. It will also be extremely useful in certain types of conditions. Surfers don't have the extra seconds to drop straight down and go back up the wave when they peel very fast. They need to get going towards the right or to the left as soon as possible. It gives you more time. Because you're already riding the shoulder with the same line you'd be taking if you were standing on your board, you don't need to pop up in an instant. This is great for surfers who have slower takeoff techniques, or for those who still need to readjust their stance often once they're up. The end goal is to pop up in the proper stance quickly, but angling the takeoff will give surfers a bit more time to take off until they reach that point. If you'd like to dive deeper into angling the takeoff, you might want to check out Angling the Takeoff course on our online coaching platform, where we go over how to angle, when and how much to angle, angling with different types of surfboards, angling mistakes and more. Learn to move your feet on the board. The main element to understand about basic footwork is that moving your feet forward will provide speed and moving them backwards will allow you to turn more efficiently. If you're standing too far forward on your longboard, you won't be able to turn efficiently. There will be too much weight forward on the surfboard. With so much weight towards the front, you might sink your surfboard's rail in the water as you try to turn. This will probably make you fall. Sliding your feet back so that your back foot gets over the tail of your surfboard is essential to turn. If you need to accelerate, practice sliding your feet up the surfboard. Slide your back foot forward closer to your front foot, then slide your front foot forward on the board. This works very well when you feel like you're losing the wave. For example, if it's getting too soft, you can move forward to accelerate and stay with the wave. Beginners sometimes try to accelerate by leaning forward on their longboard. A nine or 10 foot longboard is too big for that. The slight weight shift forward might give you a little bit of extra speed, but often it won't be enough. Becoming comfortable moving your feet back on the board before starting your turn or forward on the board for extra speed is a crucial step in a surfer's progression. Get some footage of yourself and look for feedback. The earlier in your progression journey you can get yourself filmed, the better. The first step to fix something on your technique is to discover it in the first place. You have to be conscious of what you're doing wrong to start fixing it. When watching your surf footage in slow motion, pay close attention to every moment frame by frame and try to isolate the patterns. Compare your videos to tutorials or footage from advanced surfers to understand how you should approach fixing your mistakes. Asking an experienced surfer friend or surf coach to give you feedback on your technique can help you adjust your mistakes more efficiently. Surfers can keep making the same mistakes for years without noticing them without proper instructions. Once you have a clearer idea of what you need to change, try to remember and focus on fixing it during your next surf sessions. The more you try, fail, get feedback and correct your skills, the faster you improve. Surf quality waves for your level. Just like there are world-class waves for advanced surfers, there are world-class waves for beginners and intermediates. Paying attention to this and trying to plan your future surf trips accordingly could play a major role in your progression. Imagine a spot extremely consistent with glassy offshore conditions offering long, soft, peeling waves, an easy paddle out and clearly defined peaks with both rights and lefts. Imagine repetitively surfing a spot like this, perfectly adapted to your level with a mellow crowd for seven or more days straight. This setup would help you take major steps forward in the techniques you are trying to learn and your overall surfing skills. If this sounds interesting to you, you may be interested in our surf coaching retreats. For the last 10 years at Barefoot Surf, we've specialised in coaching beginners and intermediate surfers one-on-one -on -one through our surf coaching retreats in some of the most consistent surf spots around the world, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, the Mentawis and the Maldives. To learn more about our retreats, check out the links in the description of this video. Also, don't hesitate to reach out if you would like any additional information. 
At Barefoot Surf, we help surfers kickstart their surf progression journey through our online coaching platform and community. If you want to learn more about how to accelerate your surf progression, connect with a community of like-minded surfers and solidify your knowledge of the foundations of surf technique, visit tutorials.barefoot.surf.